Thursday. Morning, afternoon, afternoon. Morning for some of you still, I think. But it is Thursday, and uh, I'm on vacation this week. Uh, more stuff came up than I would have hoped. I wish I had more time to uh, hang out and do fun stuff. But let's do a little bit of a, a little bit of a fun stream today. So, uh, no real plans. Um, this is kind of a last minute idea thrown together. Um, we will be continuing the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder on Saturday, hopefully. Um, so that'll be Saturday night. Uh, apparently I'm going to a wedding on Sunday though, so hopefully we should be okay um, for the stream Saturday. Uh, but if something happens, just so you're aware, that's probably the reason why. So how's everyone doing today? How's everyone doing? Fun streams are awesome. That, that's not a Revo. It's a pipe. Okay, so we are going to be doing a little bit of faffing about today. Um, this was kind of inspired. People kept, uh, I think it was last stream or the stream before. Um, people kept, somebody was asking about the bonsai. And I realized I haven't done anything with my bonsai um, since my How to Print ABS series. So it has been a while. Um, so I, I pulled it out of storage, and by storage I mean on the floor. Um, I haven't brushed the dust off, but there is dust on it. It's been a while. Um, I threw a spool holder on it. So today we're going to see how much of a printer you need. That's, that's kind of what we're going to roll with today. Sound is muted. Oh, sound is muted. One second, one second. Sound is muted. There we go. There we go. That should be a bit better. Um, I was recording into my... Uh, but I'm actually recording videos into the uh, the A6400, and I have the lav picked up, or the uh, receiver plugged into this. I have to drop it down a couple. Otherwise, it's a little, it's a little too gainy. So... Um, much better. There we go. Uh, Florin, thank you for coming a member. Sweet Acid, thank you for coming a member. Uh, I will be trying to do, I don't know if I can do it now, um, but I was planning to do a members only stream and Patreon members stream this week. I might have to do it next week now because some plans have changed, uh, but I will be doing one soon and we'll do like, a, I think I'll just post like an AMA or just kind of a, just a hangout chat for like an hour or so on like maybe next Tuesday. So, the bonsai. This is my bonsai. If you want to build one of yours, one of your own, there's a link in the description. Um, it's on Thingiverse. <laughs> Speaking of Thingiverse, um, if anyone here does not know yet, if you have an account on Thingiverse, it has been exposed. Um, Thingiverse has been hacked. I'm sure they won't find any of your personal data because it's Thingiverse, and if they search for it, it won't work. But if you have a Thingiverse account, that email and that password, assume it's been stolen. Okay, apparently they didn't have it salted or something. I don't know, it's not a pork roast. I don't know how hacking works, but no bueno for your stuff on Thingiverse. So go change your password, and if you use that email and that password on anything else, go change that. So, yeah. So I know this stream isn't sponsored by Thanks, but they haven't stolen your info yet and leaked it out, so. <laughs> Yeah, Thingiverse needs to go. MakerBot has not done anything with that site, and it's been on, like, its death knees forever. They, like, Thingiverse, we need to move off Thingiverse. Fangs, Prusa printers, whatever. Just, Thingiverse needs to go bye-bye. Can't change passwords. Servers are overloaded. Unsalted hash. Not quite open text, but close. See, if you were to say that to me, I would assume you are talking about, like, a, a pork roast or a... Uh, a steak. Uh, Mr. Tofu Toast, thank you for coming a member. And Michael, thank you for coming a member. So, this is the bonsai. Um, I built it. Let me pull up the page here. So, I could show you it stock. If Thingiverse decides to load. Let's see here. Oh, hey, Thingiverse loaded. Okay. So, this is a bonsai, okay? Um... It's basically like a Prusa Mini, or not a Prusa Mini, it's like a Mini Mark III, a Prusa Mark III. It's that kind of, it's a it's your standard bed flinger, generic bed flinger number 4287. So, 
it does have a direct feed tool head. Um, it's the old Mark 8 style with the uh, spur gear and a flat bearing. Um, 4010-5015 blower. Um, the original design has an unheated bed. Mine has a heated bed. So because we are cool like that, we are rocking 12 volts, 150 watts. So this whole bad boy is a 12 volt machine. Um, the stepper motors for my Z and my Y are from my Monoprice Select Mini, I believe. Um, my X and my extruder, I had to buy. The only things I had to buy on this thing that I did not already have was two or three stepper motors, the bed itself. Um, what else? Uh, this is a SKR Mini, the first one, um, SKR or V1.2, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, so it's an SKR Mini V1.2. Um, so it's got 2209s, I believe. And then it's got a Pi Zero. So yes, um, this is running Clipper. We have a bed probe that is Gorilla glued um, to the carriage. We have a V6 in here, and for the record, uh, the V6 in here, um, I don't think the heat sink is, but the block is E3D. This is my E3D V6. This is where it lives. Um, at least the parts that I'm pretty sure are the E3D parts. Um, it has a gold heater block from trying to lapse because gold, it's, it's pimp. This little machine is pimp. Um, the lead screws are from my original Voron V1.5 that I cut down. Um, same with the the nuts. Um, so yeah, this the whole point of this build was this was scrap parts. I think all in this cost me like fifty or sixty dollars, including shipping, to get the things I needed that I didn't already have on hand. And most of that was like buying the Pi Zero and shipping and like the motors and the bed. Um, oh, and I did get a flex plate for it. So yeah, like fifty or sixty dollars. It has bed probing. Um, it's direct feed. It's got silent steppers. Like, it, it, you might as well, like, it, it's better than an Ender 3, right? Um, none of the joints are blind joints. Wrong way. All the joints on this are literally held together with just plastic. Plastic printed parts is the only thing holding the frame together. There's no blind joints. There's no metal connections anywhere. Oh, and it's got an always-on park fan. Or a uh, hot-end fan. Uh, squirrel brain. That's because the way things work, they also have um, cross search. So when you search, you can turn off search other sites. But yeah, um, the thing that I'm not happy about with Thingiverse, apparently, um, if you if you go on Twitter, there's a bunch of people talking about it. Um, somebody tried to contact MakerBot and Thingiverse earlier in the week saying, hey, I think your shit's been hacked because somebody sent me some stuff from your site. Um, and they haven't done anything. They, they put out, I think they put out one tweet saying, oh, we're looking into it. One size bed, it's a 120. So because it's 120, we're going to start with a V0 profile, my V0 profile. So for reference, this is running Clipper. It is running old Clipper. Uh, we are on, oh my God, how do I see what version of Clipper I'm running? Uh, miss printer. It's got a bed mesh. Uh, bu, 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 bu. I don't even know how to see what version. Oh, there you go. Uh, so it's running fluid V010. There you go. It's running old. Whenever we last played with this was the last time this has been on. Um, Yeah, so the last time this has been on was in February. So in February 14th, that was the last time this thing was plugged in, is when I printed these files. So it, it's been a while. So we're running the old, we're running old Clipper, but it should be okay. Um, we have no input shaping. I would have to update all the firmware to the latest version because I don't think this version of, that might have had input shaping, but uh, it's got a Pi Zero. So while a Pi Zero, you can have input shaper on a machine running a Pi Zero, you can't run the input shaper calibration. 
with the ADXL, it doesn't have enough processing power. So what you could do is you could take something like a Pi 3, take the SD card out, plug this in, run your input shaper, get your values, save them to your config, and then take the SD card out of this, put it back in a Pi 0, put the Pi 0 back in, and you can go. So you can't run input shaper calibration, but you can run with input shaper on a Pi 0. I know some people get confused about that, and I know for a while, I think at first you could, but it just it doesn't have enough power crashes too often. Um, any specific plans for this? This is, the reason I still have this, this is my scrap printer. This is my printer I built out of scrap parts. Um, not in a cave though. Why is my lighting so off? One second. It's like, oh, oh, that's why it's overexposed because of this. I'm like, why is my lighting so, uh, why am I looking so blown out? There we go. Now it looks better. There we go. So this is my printer that's supposed to be the cheap crappy printer for when I need to do tutorials and what, like how to print ABS. If I did my how to print ABS series on my V2, uh, that'd be like trying to teach somebody how to drive in a Ferrari, right? It's, it's, it's not, not good for that. So today we're going to ask the question, how much of a printer do you need? So 48 volts. Um, everyone's jumping to 48 volt drivers now. They are awesome. Don't get me wrong. 48 volts is nice. I do have an SKR or not an SKR, an Octopus Pro on the way with 48 volts. So I'll be playing with that when that comes in. But you see people, we're going to 48 volts. Uh, <clears throat> Mosquito Magnum plus plus pluses. Uh, you got people running O drives. You got people having industrial fans blowing on their part to cool down the plastic fast enough. Do you really need all that? We're going to find out how much you can push a machine built out of scrap parts in a 12 volt uh, setup um, running Clipper from a year ago. We'll see how far we can go. Oh, by the way, I have no idea the spec on these motors. Um, they're stepper online motors. Uh, how much juice am I feeding these? I don't even know. Um, two amps, point two amps. So these are probably shitty motors. So we're gonna find out uh, what we can do. So a little bit of movie magic. I have gone through and set up a profile for this. So I've gone ahead, I've, I've changed my start stop commands like start print and print. Um, I've gone and set up a profile for this machine. Um, but for the slicer settings, we are starting with V0. So the first thing I'm gonna do is because it's 12 volts, I'm gonna start heating the bed up because it's probably gonna take a while. And by the way, I don't know if you can hear this. Let me mute the music, or I don't even have the music on yet. I'll turn music on in a second. But uh, let's see, you're gonna, you're gonna find this hilarious. Let me turn off noise suppression, okay? Listen to the fan when I turn on the bed. This is how much power we're dealing with, okay? This, we got to keep this thing chained up. So just listen to the fan when I turn the bed on. That's right. <laughs> okay, let's get the music going. The fan ramps down when the bed is on. Uh, Martin, set in pipe. Um, 48 volts is about as far as you can go. Um, beyond that, you're, that's a little too high voltage for a lot of the components themselves. Motors and like whatnot can do the 48s, but you're not going to be seeing people jump to like, what's after 48? 64? So. Let's load up a file. So, um, can somebody... Where are the speed benchy rules? I want to use that as a reference. Um, or if somebody can copy and paste what the speed benchy rules are. It's like 0 0.2 layer height, uh, two wall, three or four bottom layer. I'm trying to remember what it is. Sounds like a jet taking off. Yeah, that, that's the problem with the, uh, the older SKR Mini I have in here. It's got an always on part fan. I only have like, remember for the longest time, all controller boards only had one CNC fan. It was dumb. Like at least with the ramps, you can get by with using the second heater output as that, but. Okay, two millimeter wall. 
Okay, two millimeter resolution. Okay, so I'm assuming layer height. Uh, wall line count set to two, top bottom layer set to three, skirt two, infill at 15%. We're just using this as our reference and I'm gonna go grid. Uh, oh, cubic. Okay, cubic. Oh, I don't think it matters. So two walls, 0.4 millimeter, uh, nozzle, 0.2 layer height. Is it a sun on? I, I it, it, it's a uh, whatever China decided to throw in the bag the day I bought it. Same with the 5015 part fan. Will we get to the point where the part fan will kick on? I don't know. Um, I have no idea what this is. When I did previously printing this thing, I ran this thing conservative. Like I did not push this machine at all. So in terms of speed, we're capping out at 110 mm3. Okay. Let's see what we got for speeds and feeds anyways. So for reference, this is my V0 profile. Or actually, no, this is Toasty V0. Uh, transfer, there we go. So V0, so 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and fill 15, perimeters two, top bottom three. Okay. So speed, so we got 40 exterior, 80 infill. Let's try 100 infill. Bridge speed, thin extrusions, external. So we'll run with this for now. And basically if we run into, if it crashes, it crashes. If it doesn't crash, we're gonna push it to the point it crashes. So let's just kind of run with this for now. Did I turn noise canceling back on? I hope I did. I've got, uh, this guy's printing something right now and I got the resin printer going right now. So good thing I don't spell ABS or resin. So we're looking at about an hour. So jobs, upload. There we go. How crashy. Well, if it starts layer skipping, um, then we know we, we are at our limit. <laughs> been a while. Victor, I've been good. Top out 375 to 400 milliliters a second. My printer running 12 volt at 1.25 amps. Yeah, John, these motors are... Not those motors. Um, these motors are, my Z motors are literally from a Monoprice Select Mini and the rest of them are, I think they're like 36 or 48 ounce. Um, if you, those are the motors right there. If anyone decides to look them up, I think, yeah, those I have on the XY and my extruder, I think. Yeah, I, did, I have them on X, Y, and Extruder because they were like a kit. Like I bought three at once. It was a three pack. And uh, for filament, it's, uh, what is this? This is uh, Bichu PLA Map. BQ, Bichu. Somebody told me it's pronounced Bichu at one point. I don't know. Do infill at 10%? Okay, well, we'll change that for the next one if we make it through this one. I got a feeling the accelerations on travel is going to cause issues. Uh, Nero can speak baguette, parle tout français. Uh, oui, je peux parler juste un petit peu de français, pas beaucoup. Mon, mon français n'est pas très bien.
Yeah, je suis allé dans une école française uh, jusqu'à 6M. 6, 6M? 6M? Your 6th grade 6. Uh, Domenico, uh, thanks. Yeah, that video, that was, um, the second, that was the first video I've actually edited with, like, um, I, I did the, uh, interview video, which a lot of people like that, which I, I, I want to go back and they, like, I wasn't able to cover everything, so I'm hoping to go back. Um, but, uh, that video was the, the interview at Replitech. That was the first video I edited with Resolve. And now I've actually gone ahead and purchased Resolve. So I have Resolve Studio and I have the speed editor, which it, I'm still getting used to it, but it makes like the, at least the initial rough cut edit where you're just pulling out the clips that you want from your raw footage and arranging it. It makes that so much faster. Uh, yeah, the problem Mark is I went to a French school till grade six and then I got switched to the English school system. I live in Canada. Um, there's options to go to French schools. So the problem I have is I've lost a lot of it because I literally don't remember what a lot of the words are. Um, cause I, I literally, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Nobody in my family speaks French. I don't work with, nope. Okay. So first problem that's supposed to be in the middle of the bed. So we've already had a layer skip. <laughs> So obviously we have a problem there. It's over extruding like mad too. Okay, we're going to cancel this. This is not good. And I got to check my extrusion. Yeah, that's... So, one, that's supposed to be in the middle of the bed. <laughs> what size nozzle? I, it should be a point... I think it's a point two. Or a point four. bit here. Okay, let's do a quick flow test. I think the Y belt is loose. Nope. Oh yeah, keep the bed warm. Keep the bed warm. I think the Y belt is loose. Uh, 0.2 amp. The motors, I think, are actually only rated to like 0.4 amp. We're using cheap. Remember, guys, this is a cheap machine. This is literally the cheapest three pack of motors, uh, NEMA 17s, that I could get out of AliExpress when I bought them. Okay, no, I don't want a thousand millimeters. I want a hundred millimeters. By the way, um, after being spoiled with a Revo for the past like three months, watching a 12 volt V6 heat up, oh my God. Like, oh my God. Okay, extrude. Oh yeah, we are definitely over extruding by quite a bit. Oh my God, how much is? This is only supposed to be two millimeters a second and it's way past. Oh yeah, we're way over extruding. This ain't a hundred millimeters of filament guys. 
finish and quit extruding. Uh, did, what did this is what happens when you don't touch a printer for months? You don't remember what you did to it. 16 micro steps. Step distance. How much am I doing? Okay, so let me... Now it's a, it's a 1.8 motor. Remember, this is, this is, this config is pre, uh, pre, uh, the new way of doing it. So this is steps. So let's do, so if I extrude 20 millimeters, let's see where we go with 20. Twenty millimeters extrude. It extruded forty, so it's double. So we're, we're doubling. So so I need to go. Uh, yeah, we're doubling it. So I would double it, or no, I would have it, right? I would have it. I don't know. Double it. We'll try. I always end up doing it wrong the first time. So uh, did I change the micro steps? No, they're set for 16. I don't think I would have set them for eight. Save and close for more restart. Hopefully I went the right way. No, I went the wrong way. Did I level a bed? I don't need to level a bed. It's got a bed probe. Oh yeah, I'm not actually going after the uh, the speed Benji. Like it, I'm, I'm, this isn't serious. This is just having fun with an old machine. Just to see what you can get out of an old machine with very basic hardware. If you're running a firmware that is uh, modern. That's what we're doing here. Okay, maybe it's this value. Just set the micro steps to 32 and be done. Uh, I, I, need, I need the torque. up okay so obviously those travels are a little too much let's drop our travel speeds down so travel we're gonna do at what a, we're gonna do at 200 we'll do we were doing 300 we'll do 200 let's drop our accelerations no we'll leave the accelerations for now we'll leave the accelerations for now Max print speeds. We don't go past that. Because I don't know if it was the. It was probably the accelerations that caused that layer skip there. So let, let's drop down to 2500 actually. As our max Excel. Slice now.
Belt tension's fine. They're actually like rock hard. These are good belts. Good belts. Okay, so where are we at now? So I told it to extrude 20, and we extruded 20. Okay, we're good. So we are good there with that. Let's upload a new Benchy. this one go. Okay, these are a little tight because we are grinding filament already. Although we are probably grinding filament because we are over extruding by like double. Yeah, see why level the bed? When you have a 120, millib 120 millimeter bed, why not do a nine point bed leveling grid? Why not? You got it, use it. Yeah, this printer's running Clipper. Oh yeah, this is a PCB heater. This is a, you can go on AliExpress, they're like, I think these were like 12 bucks. Um, I think shipping costs more, honestly. But yeah, this is a PCB heater bed. No, it, the bed is centered. So this bonsai is actually oversized. Um, technically, I think I can fit a 140 millimeter bed um, by like one, it's like 130 or 135 by like 140. So I can actually put a bigger bed on here. The problem is um, one, how, how bloody offset that probe is. Um, and two, they don't make a bed that's like 135 by 140. So I just threw a 120 on it and that way I can get better travel. So yes, the bed is offset to one side of the printer. Uh, why MCU on fluid clipper? Yeah, try a better USB cable. Okay, we didn't layer shift that time. We did not layer shift. why it's tall. Hello, Wodge. That bed probe is really close. Um, it's mounted literally with a, a screw that was available and glue. I could tell you how close it is because that's also my end stop. There's no uh, end stop on here. That probe uh, is, where's probe, 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 extruder, bed mesh, probe. Uh, oh no, that's the offset. That's where it triggers. So it triggers 5.78 millimeters up, but uh, it ain't that much. Peter, one day, one day I'll get to it. Okay, so it seems to be going okay. What are, what are we doing for speeds? Oh, is, yeah, this is an old version of Clipper. It doesn't tell you speeds and feeds, unfortunately. Crud, oh well. But we can bump up our speeds. 
So what we're gonna do, because we can, I think we can bump it up to 200. Um, it doesn't increase accelerations, but once it starts getting to like infill um, and higher up on the boat, we'll start bumping the percentage of speed up until we start getting a failure. And then we will re-slice it with whatever settings we think are okay. Uh, Mathis, yes, this this is a rat rig. It's their new rat rig. It's the, the it's the rat's nest, and it's made out of garbage. See? See? Rat nest. Look at all that wires. It's a rat nest. Point four nozzle. Uh, an Ender 3 original can handle 6 to 7 and 360. Yeah, I did, um, I put Clipper on my Ender 3 and we were dicking around with that one night on stream. It's just, this thing, I literally have no idea what these motors can do because these are legit like the cheapest AliExpress three pack of motors I could buy. Okay, let's bump it up to 110%. Okay, we can definitely speed these walls up. Remember, I, st I didn't start with a fast profile. I started with my V0 profile. So it's still like for details and whatnot. This isn't a speed benchy profile. Okay, you know what? Let's just jump right to 200. 200%. Cause it's gonna be, I think we're gonna be running into issues with acceleration. That's gonna be what our, our limit is gonna be, I believe. Yeah, so it's definitely gonna be acceleration. Okay, let's re-slice this and see what we can get. So let's go and actually bump up all speeds. Okay, so that's 120 across the board. And we'll do 2,500 acceleration across the board. Filament setting, do we have cooling? Disable fan for first two layers. Or first layer, max speed at five. Oh, okay, there's a layer shift. Cancel. Yeah. So, save that. Load speed benchy one. So now we're doing fast. So now 120 across the board, 2500 Excel. What's better, fluid or mainsail? Personal preference, pick whichever one has the UI you think is the prettiest. That's my opinion. Uh, Excel control off and control it via, actually, oh shoot, I should probably check what my default Excel is in here. Uh, 3000. Uh, from Calf the Brutus, looks like a Lolzbot mini thing. Okay, let me get this print going um, and I will take a look at that. And then tip for anyone who is uh, a streamer, uh, whenever you search for anything, never have it on your screen when you search. Because all you need is somebody to go, hey, look at this, and then you click the link, and then you got boobs, and then you are banned. But this is a printer. Okay, uh, when's this one from? Is this a newer one or older one? From last year. Where's the bonsai from? Two years ago. Okay. So this is a Brutus. So this is, okay. Yeah, it's just a simple little printer. Like, it looks cool. Probably print pretty dang good. I love this. Decent tool head. Honestly, I am all one. I am 
fully on the direct feed uh, train nowadays. Like when I see, like I can't stand Bowden. <laughs> I'm all for direct feed nowadays. Have I updated my passwords? I have. I've updated all of them. I had to update them all the other day because of Twitch. So I'm like, I think Thingiverse was using like a really old password that I used. So not that big of a deal for me, luckily. Uh, have I ever sold any of my old printers? I have not. I've given away uh, one to a family member, um, but I have not sold any it would be very hard like like i all my especially my vorons like they're i built them they're mine even if i'm not using them that often some of them like they're still kind of like I, it's mine i built it um but like the ender 3 is a project i you know the ming die might sell that we'll we'll see or give it to somebody or whatever um yeah i don't know I'm not drowning under boxes of printers. Um, if that happens, then yeah, I probably will. The problem is, one, I live in Canada and I live in an area, I'm not near like anyone in like the community that I know of. So it's kind of like, if I wanted to give one away, shipping would make it really, really expensive, especially if I tried to ship a printer to the US, so. Like, I've never had an issue with Bowdoin, but after switching over to direct feed on a lot of my printers, I just love the ease of use. Like, it just makes tuning and everything so much simpler. And I, I don't speed print, right? Um, like, I, I don't speed print. Okay, 2500 Excel is too much. We'll see how long we get. So fellow Canadian am in capital region. Capital region is like nine to ten hours away from me. Like it's honestly it's all personal preference, right? Some people like their Fords and some people like their Chevys and some people like their Hondas, right? At the end of the day, it's all personal preference. Uh, for the longest time I was for Bowden, but after you don't need to pay somebody to take Honestly, I have the Mingda, what is it, the Magician? The one that uh, Joel and a few others hated, I've had no problems with it. I have it in the other room, um, just because I have no room in here for it. Um, I've printed half dozen things on it so far. Like, obviously I'm not printing it on it a lot, um, but I've had zero issues with that machine. It's it's worked fine, so. Well, you need to but thanks for the $5, the Minga, appreciate it. Uh, did I set the feed over right? Oh no, oh God, no. I did not, uh, shoot, 100%, 100%. Shoot. Oops. Okay, so we were doing 200% there. Let's drop the speed back down to 100%. There we go. That is probably what uh, that Excel, that travel is what probably got us. Oh, and pressure advance is not tuned on this printer, I believe. Um, I don't have a local maker space. That's like one thing that I don't like is the city I live in doesn't have a local maker space. We don't have any um, like maker fairs or anything like, which is really kind of poopy because like the city I live in is big with industri industry. Like there's a ton of tool and mold shops in my city. Um, the big three did have a presence until they all started hemorrhaging money. So now it's like Chrysler, I think is all that's left. But um, like, we are like the wind like i live in windsor ontario for those that don't know it's a blue collar town um a lot of industry a lot of like it's a lot of it's like a labor job city right it's a, it's a blue collar city there's none of that there's no maker fairs there's no maker spaces there's nothing so There's no other like content creators I can collab with. I think one of one of the 3DP guys is in uh, Michigan somewhere, but I can't remember who. But still, I, I can cross the border finally in uh, next month. So, uh, two four seven exactly. Like it, it mostly comes down to tuning. I just like direct feed for just I don't know. I just find it easier. It's a shorter tuning process in my opinion. 
And since I'm not worried too much about tool head weight, I just like it. I don't know. It's just, per again, personal preference. This guy was originally boated, and then I slapped a uh, the DD head on it. The library doesn't have a maker. No. Our library is lucky if it's open. <laughs> is Hypercube Evo a good choice for a first Core XY printer? I would say no because of its age. It's... If you build one to the nines, it's a good printer, apparently. I've never built one. I don't know anyone who has one personally, so I can't really comment on it. But it is an older design. Um, yeah. So. We'll do Windsor 89 and 90. Okay, well, you were here um, when I was one and two. <laughs> or two and three. So yeah, like there's nothing in Windsor for like printing. There's Replitech. <laughs> Go buy a spool of filament from them. They make good stuff. Am I using input shaper? No, this does not have input shaper. This does not have, um, uh, it does not have input shaper. It does not have uh, pressure advance. Do I have a rat rig? I do not have a rat rig, uh, although uh, Nitra, or not Nitra, uh, Vector, Vector 3D? Vector 3D. Oh, we just have a layer shift. We just had a layer shift. Okay, so it is the travels that's killing me. It is the travels. Okay. Ooh. Okay, my cancel print script, uh, likes to go down, it looks like. Settings. Printer. Let me fix that. That goes up. What Why is your are go to you printer for down? new people who don't want to upgrade multiple times in the future? Well, we'll just have it just move to the back and get rid of that part. Same in clothes. Why not use input shaper? Because um, it this has a Pi Zero. This is running like old Clipper, for one. Um, so it's running old Clipper, um, and it has a Pi Zero. So I'd have to do a full firmware update to the newest version of Clipper that supports input shaper. Because I'm pretty sure the version of Clipper on here does not support input shaper. Lucy, Lucy. Um, and I would have to install a Raspberry Pi that was more powerful that could handle uh, running input shaper. But we're not too concerned about appearance. We just want to see how fast we can go. We're just having fun. Honestly, today's stream is complete pointless fun. So if I go 120 across the way, okay, 3,000 or so. Okay, uh, ooh, uh, West Todd, $5, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, what is your go-to printer for new people who don't want to upgrade multiple times in the future? Um, Prusa Mini. I don't have one, but if you don't want to upgrade the printer at all, and you don't want to work on your printer, that rules out um, pretty much all the entry-level AliExpress the China printers. So there goes your Ender 3, your Neptune, all your entry-level stuff there. Um, so you're looking for something that's going to have reliability. It's going to work right out of the box. You don't want to tweak with it. You don't want to play with it. You just want to print with it. Probably the Prusa Mini at that point. Uh, Alan, not everyone has built dozens of Vorons. So for all, like I've noticed a lot of people building a Voron. That's the first time they're building a actual complete printer from scratch that's kind of like... A, a more advanced build so not everyone is an expert printer builder off the back and also watching people build printers from scratch over multiple days that's not really something a lot of people do so when you watch like a youtuber build their you know rat rig and it's it's a video series like it's going to be edited for quickness but when you're streaming one 
that's a massive thing sitting on your head while you're streaming. Because when I, like, if you watch any of my build series, when I finish the streams, I'm done. Like, I'm exhausted. That 10 hour stream when I built a V0 in a day, by the end, I, I literally, I finished my stream. I went and got some Swiss Chalet, because um, I love a quarter chicken dinner. Um, <laughs> I went home, I ate that, and I passed out. My Sunday was gone. I couldn't do anything Sunday. So live streaming something technical like building a printer doubles your mental like load because you're constantly worrying about trying to figure something out that you've never done before for a lot of them. And then also you have 324 people with your, their eyeballs on you chatting and wanting to know what's going on. And like for me, if I if I like realize I haven't said anything in like 20 or 30 seconds and there's dead air, that like, I start getting nervous cause like, oh, sh I gotta be talking, right? So it's, watch some of the things, honestly, I like model a lot of like how I behave on streams um, off of like popular Twitch streamers. Um, if you wanna be successful on as a stream uh, streamer, watch how the, pr the popular Twitch streamers do things and watch some of like their interviews where they talk. And it's like, it is a huge amount of work just to constantly be interacting with a chat while doing something else. That's why I play background music. Um, a lot of people don't like the fact that I play music on my stream. Um, I And it's just background music. Like right now it's stream beats, synth wave, non vocals, it's quiet, but it's there. Watch somebody build a printer who doesn't have background music and doesn't talk with chat often. And you'll, I've watched other people street live stream their printer builds um, and Vorons and even other printers too. But when you're sitting there watching somebody just. For like three minutes and nobody, nobody's saying anything. Yeah, it's, it's, that's why you don't see as many. It, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work to live stream building a printer and it, it's not something that anyone everyone can do so when people are doing it give them a break so uh define mzv input shaping on both axes i don't think i have input shaper like i don't think this is a input shaper compatible uh build of clipper i'll check after this print um uh, even when shooting a video, sometimes video you know, it makes it more difficult live. Yeah, like you, you're constantly video. having to do whatever you're doing and then also jug, juggle um, the recording aspect. Like honestly, if you watch me like record a video, I spend as much time on the first 30 seconds of a video as I do the next like 20 minutes of a video. Because like that intro and getting started, I, that's my hardest part. That in editing, I hate editing. That's why I've spent a lot of money on the editing equipment, so I don't have to spend as much time editing. So. Built my 500, 500. That's a big rat rig stream, and it was stressful and exhausting. Yep. Thanks, Victor. Yeah, 10 hours. It, it, I have it on my channel. I, I live streamed an entire V0 build and then I submitted the entire live stream while I was still live uh, to the subreddit for my serial. <laughs> Andy, $4.99. Thank you. Appreciate it. Did I miss one? Did I miss one? Dustin, $20. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, keep up with good work. Can't really watch since it's working hours for me. That's ah, okay. I won't tell your boss. Yeah, coupled with chat screaming at you if you use a tool they don't approve of. Like, honestly, I, I was watching Stefan's, um, his Voron build when chat was constantly harping him about Clipper. That was painful. As somebody who streams, that was painful to watch. Because, like, you're, it's it's just painful. Please don't do that kind of thing. Um, so, thank you for, oh, uh, Andy, uh, did I say, uh, Fortnite, if I already said it, I did, but thanks for all your videos and information which made it possible for your Switchfire build. Awesome. Uh, by Pokimane and Amaranth, right? Of course, like uh, I was gonna do, I was gonna bring this to my mom's house. My mom has a hot tub. So I was gonna build the printer in the hot tub, but um, I figured, you know what? I got better lighting here. Uh, watching me for background music. A lot of people said they, they watch my stream as kind of like a podcast apparently, so. No talking ASMR build. <laughs> Uh, 
Have you ever had a printer catch fire? I have not, but, but, you should always be safe and have some sort of uh, fire fighting. These were cheap. I got these at Costco. They're just like the spray can ones. Cause honestly, if for the most part, if you're going to have a fire, it's going to be a, it's either going to be a full on, oh shit fire or probably, oh, oh my, my circuit board is, you know, my PCB kind of smoking and I burnt a wire. So I'd rather not get the big old hefty ABC fire extinguisher and just go brah, and completely cover my entire room. So that's why I have like the little small one. Um, I have one of these under my desk. I have another one right by the door of the room. And then upstairs in my kitchen, I actually have a proper fire extinguisher. And then in this room, right above this desk, I have a smoke detector. Uh, dust and speed. Yes, you cannot capture ADXL data on a zero. Once you have your input shaper values, you can put them on, but you can't run the input shaper. There's also a lot of time in thinking about pre-stream setup, lighting, camera position. Oh yeah, there, there's a lot of work into setting up for a stream. Like it's been, I've been doing this for over a year now and I'm still working on it. Um, it wasn't, it didn't say you became a member. I think that was just the, um, stream beats, uh, or stream labs being a little funky, but yeah, I might have to update that, but it, that was your, like, every, you get like an anniversary message. You could say after a certain amount of time. Um, I think you can connect a Pi Pico to it. I'm not hundred percent sure though. Can I intentionally just catch a printer on fire for fun? Um, I plan on that. I actually do plan on that. Um, once. There are things I want to do to my Revo that I cannot do because I only have one Revo. I don't want to do any destructive testing to it or potential destructive testing to it until I have something to replace it because I like it. <laughs> I don't want to lose it. Um, but at some point I will be testing the PTC heater in it um, to destruction because I, I know they didn't change the heater between the beta and the final. They changed some other things and I won't go into that. So thumbs, like mine is not a beta. There are change differences between mine and the final revision, but the actual heater itself, I believe is unchanged. So I have no problem testing this to destruction. And then what I will also be doing is testing the, what causes the destruction. I'm gonna feed it however many volts live until it dies um, directly into it. So I'm gonna feed it directly 24 volts. I'm literally gonna take a 24 volt power supply and hook it up directly um, and let whatever happens, happens. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to a V6 um, with a copper block. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to a mosquito. And I'm gonna put them in, a, I'm gonna print a mount for them, a plastic mount, put a fan on it, have it set up like a normal hot end and then give it a runaway and see what happens. So uh, it was a 32 volt or 30, 32 or 36 volt test. Um, it glue, it glowed like Rudolph. So, so yeah, so I'm prepared to kill a mosquito, a Revo and a V6 for that video. I'm just waiting until I have another Revo because I only have the one and I don't want to lose it. <laughs> Are they going to use interrupted threads? No, the machining for that would make it much harder because they would have to add machining. Uh, it would be more complicated machining. So I seen Repcord's heater block for those that haven't seen it. Let me see here. I got to talk to that guy at one point. I need one of his rep boxes. So, um, yeah, for, uh, for those that didn't know, this happened to Repcord. Um, he bought a, it was a, a brand new Prusa. It came from Prusa, a new, I don't know if it was an entire tool head or just the assembled heater or V6. Um, but it melted on him at like 250. He like set it to go to 250 and it just melted. And the fact that the heater um, is still installed, none of the plastic around it is melted. Um, it's a 24 volt heater. He checked, he checked all the usual suspects. There's no melting noise or melting, like uh, burning smell coming from the controller board. No pop MOSFET or anything. Um, it's probably a material issue with the block itself. That's what a lot of people are thinking, including me now, cause that, that ain't right. 
It was a whole printer? Yeah. But yeah, it was new. Basically, it wasn't a... It wasn't something he did. That was like directly from Prusa, so... Would you recommend getting the LDO Switchwire Flex Plate on a Prusa? Um, I like the LDO plates. Um, that's what I got on my Switchwire. If it's cheaper, I would go with it. You're not going to lose anything, in my opinion. Yeah, I had a MOSFET die in the Ender 3. The bed wouldn't stop heating up. Yeah, that's a runaway. So we seem to be doing pretty good here so far. So right now, uh, this is flat, 120 millimeters a second across the board for all moves and 3000 Excel. So, so I think this is like a 40 minute benchy, it's saying, estimated like 40 minutes. So let's speed it up a bit. Go to 110. Okay, so now we're running at 111. How is Clipper runaway protection? Ah, oh, pretty good. It, it's about the same. Basically, if it doesn't detect what it expects within a certain amount of time, it, it turns off the printer. Like, honestly, we could, we could test it right now if you want, because I'm about to finish this one um, and bump the speeds up. Uh, Travis D'Souza, 15 uh, uh, Swedish Grand Donuts. Uh, hello, Nero. So the Benchy is gone, and there's a note there now. Uh, there's That's a pipe. Hello, Nero. Um, I don't so have Z-Hop on, gone, because on no a printer like this, Z-Hop is slow. Okay, so you want to see how good um, thermal runaway is? Um, do you want it? Should I show the print? You know what? You, it, the printer is a printer. I'll show you the screen. Okay. So, there's the console. What I'm going to do is see our heat. I'm just going to pull the uh, thermistor out. If I can figure out which one it is. printer out. Mr. Ben, the Mr. there. Okay, so I'm pulling the thermistor out for the hot end. There you go. So that's, uh, there's your, how good your runaway detection is. So if your thermistor were to die mid-print, it's like within two seconds it shuts down. And now it's back in, because I plugged it back in. So there you go. Yeah, this is an old version of Fluid. This is from, this printer was last online in February. So it's running old stuff. So there you go. That's how quick your uh, thermal runaway is. Okay, so let's try 3500 XL. And we'll, we'll try 140 for our speed. Okay. Yeah, you, you don't need to update like every day. <laughs> 
And usually, like, I'm one of those, unless there's, like, a, a brand new feature that I need, I won't update. Like, none of my machines I keep up to date. It's literally when I build them, I install Clipper, and then odds are I won't install another version of Clipper until I rebuild them, or, like, a brand new feature comes out that I really need. So. Settings, printer. So, just so we don't run into that. Let's bump up our Excel limit to 5,000. Uh, I am missing. Oh, I, I don't have my. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I don't have. Uh, what is it? Square corner velocity enabled. Square corner velocity. We'll put that at 10. Square corner velocity 10. Save and close from our restart. Don't fix it if it ain't broken. Exactly. I'm, I'm a fervent believer in that. Because all you need is to update to a, uh, a revision that breaks everything and then you've got a back update. It's a pain. What printer is this? This is a Bonsai. I have a link in the description if you want to know more about it, but it's a uh, legit a printer I built out of scrap parts and stuff I had sitting around for the most part. Um, they aren't anchored up top here. The, uh, the lead screws, they are attached with their, their high quality uh, Eason ABS plus couplers from the lead screw to the motor. And then up top, um, they're just floating in there. They're not actually attached to anything. They're just floating. So, yep, the highest quality Eason ABS Plus uh, couplers that you can't get on AliExpress. Is it fast like a V0? We're finding out. Remember, these motors are only being fed 0.2 amp right now. Are they even hot? I'll check next print, but I think I can bump up the voltages on these motors. Uh, any news on the LDO 2.4 kit? Um, hopefully by end of year, I think. I know I'm getting their switch wire kit, um, but their switch wire kit is gonna, I, I know they're doing a switch wire in a, in a V2, but the switch wire kit will come to market sooner because they already have everything for the switch wire kit. Um, it, all they think they need is like, they have all the motors, they have the beds, like, they have everything for a switch wire. It's screws and printed parts and electronics that they already have from the uh, V0 kit, pretty much. It's, it's an Ender, or it's a uh, Escara Mini E3. They have the beds because they make them in-house, so... Like, that's the only thing that's really different. And then it's bearings and belts and whatnot, so... Crimping wires for V0 and watching the stream. Uh, bought 42, uh, Zeki. Uh, for HRK, kit. HRK... Uh, I can't remember what HRK is. Uh, Crimping wires for the zero watching the stream. Could have bought a Prusa Mini as a second printer and be happy. Careful who you follow on YouTube, kids. Yeah, but you're, you're more happy crimping those wires right now. Yeah, a Tiny M is a V0 uh, built with 2020 components. Or uh, V2 components. So 2020 extrusions, NEMA 17 motors, etc. Whereas a Micron is a V2 built with V0 stuff. Croatian Kuna. Okay, where'd the H come from? And the R. Hot end Revo kit. How much to build a bonsai? I don't know, this was built out of scrap parts. The only out of my pocket expenses to build this thing was the Raspberry Pi Zero, three stepper motors and the bed. And a flex plate. Her, her rest got, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense, because of course not everyone, not everyone's country's name is their country name in English. Uh, Mega Mac, yes. Actually, I have no idea. I've never really looked at the conversions that much. That's the thing, you might have had some random version of this, uh, the Ender, because there's like the Ender 3, the Ender 3 Pro, 
the Ender 3 V2, which is better than the Pro, because the Ender, th Ender 3 Pro is an upgrade over the Ender Original, whereas the Ender 3 V2 is version 2 of the Ender 3. So, for under 500 building a printer, um, a switch, uh, a V0 kit, maybe? Thanks for streaming Euro time. I try to do the, the Euro streams, the early afternoon streams when I can. Y'all just need to make sure you, you like that smash button and I'll keep doing it. Oh yeah, if you guys didn't see, this was a five hour benchy with that 0.8 nozzle we were playing around with uh, last on Saturday there. Big pink benchy. And if you're wondering how the overhangs handled, um, they they okay for a um, a 1.8 millimeter nozzle. Actually, let's go with the overhead view for this for a bit. How's it going, you beautiful man? How are you liking your Delta printer and resin printer? Craig Hack 666. How's it going, you beautiful man? How are you liking your Delta printer and resin printer? Uh, pretty good. I haven't used the Delta much. Um, I'm going to print something on it probably later today, actually. Um, the resin's printing right now. Um, I printed this guy on uh, last Friday. On it. That Xenomorph that everyone prints once they get a resin printer. This one actually came out really good. It's um, Soraya Tech Fast Smoky, Smoky Black ABS. More cooling. It has cooling. It's got a 5015. What do I think of the Fetus Rapido? Um, I don't have one, so I can't really comment on it. I think they are going to send me one. Um, it looks, I don't know. I don't know what to think about it until I have it. I think it's, they're trying to make it like a Magnum Plus equivalent type hot end. So I don't know. Because obviously, like, they have the Hick. So it's like a Hick with a uh, circular ceramic heater. So. Oh, the big bench, you could use more cooling. Um, well, remember, I was printing this on my Toasty Boy, which is my high temp printer. So that does not have good part cooling. Plus, it literally was extruding um, like raw filament spools. Like it comes out at 0.8 millimeters. So um, you need a crazy amount of cooling for those fatter nozzles. Yeah, it looks like a late Gen 2 hot end. Yeah, is that what we're, is it, are we deciding now there's generations of hot ends? Because like, I don't know. Is that what we're kind of going with? But yeah, it, it's, it's old, it's the old ecosystem. Um, like I'm of the opinion, and if you didn't watch my video, I, I sat down for like 20 minutes and talked about the Revo, my beta experiences, and a bunch of, answered some of the common questions I see. I can't get over how many people are complaining about the mounting options. They've said they are working on more mounting options and the cold side is open source. I guarantee you by either release or soon after release, you're gonna get mounting options for that thing for any, any, any printer out there. So, because somebody's gonna take advantage of that market. Okay, how, okay. So we are losing XY. Okay, so let's bump our motor voltages up a bit, printer, and see if we can do that. So, so we're gonna bump those up. I love flex plates. Okay. 
update. So firmware restart, and then job, and then print. Can you say what mount Voron is going to use? Um, so for us in the beta, um, the beta units came with the... Um, the beta units were essentially Revo micros. So this one here with the screw top. And um, since I'm running a beta unit in my Voron, that's the current mount. Because we had to design for that in mind. <laughs> Okay, back up. So the tool head is still a work in progress, by the way. That's why you're not seeing it. Although technically the one I have in there is like literally the first revision. So it's basically like the existing one with a different mount. And then basically an ABBN. It's not the, the fancy stuff that is being played with now. Um, I was like that at first, Torx, and then I, I just realized get flex plates that are bigger than your bed, so you don't have to worry about lining it up properly because it just overhangs and you don't see the uh, gap. What is this printer? So, John, this is my bonsai. This was a printer I built with scrap parts and things I had laying around um, for cheap. I literally spent maybe 50 or $60 of my own money to get it up and running of like additional stuff I didn't already have. Most of that was buying three motors, a bed, a flex plate, and a Raspberry Pi Zero because this runs Clipper, um, and it's also 12 volt. So this is my lowest end printer, and we're seeing how fast we can get it. Because, I don't know, why not? It's Thursday, I'm on vacation, and I felt like doing a stream. So, and apparently 327 people think that's cool. So, hello. Make sure you like the smash button. A TLDR of the clicky probe. Um, it's a probe, it goes click. Um, I don't have it on any of my printers. Um, I Maybe one day I'll switch over to it, but right now all my machines are running their inductive probes, like their spec probes, and I'm having no real issues, so yeah. A normal time stream. Sorry, right, I'll be back to the uh, the late night Saturday night stream this Saturday. Hopefully, I have a wedding to go to on Sunday now. Um, I should be. It shouldn't really cause an issue, but just you know. Uh, and you deserve it. Have one later, JP Wisers. Uh, I actually no. I have. What do I have? I have, what do I have upstairs. Gibson. I think I have Gibson. Yeah, it's Gibson. I think. Uh, open source. Yeah, okay, so for those that don't know, the, the upper, the cold side basically will mean they will publish what you would need to do, what kind of design you would need to follow so that it would be compatible with the Revo. So basically it's a Hamera uh, heat break style screw and then the, uh, the little feature that you need for the spring to click onto and then have fun with the rest. Use a mechanical end stop. Um, on my 2.4, for like the, are you talking about the Z or the probe? For the probe, I'm using just the uh, inductive probes. What is the Micron? The Micron is a V2 built with, uh, V0 stuff. So this is a Micron. Um, I'm hopefully gonna be building one of these in the future. Um, but basically, it's a v, V2 built with 15, 15 extrusions, uh, the mini afterburner from the V0, um, NEMA 14 motors, etc. I love little printers, honestly. Like, I, the only big printer I ever built was Tallboy. 
And that was my first printer I built after a Monoprice Select Mini. So I, I got my Monoprice Select Mini, it's 120 millimeters cubed. And I went, this is too small. I'm gonna go build a big printer. So I built a 300 by 300 by 400 Boron V 1.5. That's also the first Boron I built. So I built that. It was originally a 1.5 and then I went, that's too big. So the next one I built was a 250 V2. And I haven't built a bigger printer bigger than that. Uh, Toasty is 250, the V0s are V0s. The switch wire is a switch wire, which is 250. Um, yeah. Baby wire. A, a mini switch wire would be cool. Uh, one, hi Nero, uh, finally catch another stream. Thanks a lot for your all the content. I've managed to build your V2. Congrats, man. Good to hear. Someone build a mini switch wire. What's your opinion on the Trident compared to the 2.4? What's the difference? Okay, so we're at the point now, for those that don't know, the gantry on a Trident, and for intensive purposes, the, the V1.8 gantry is a V2.4 gantry upside down. So they're the V1.8, the V2, and the Trident, for the functional functionality-wise, have the exact same gantry in terms of performance. The Trident one is now a single MGM-12 across instead of the dual MGM-9s that it's on the V2 and the 1.8. Um, that is drop-in compatible now on a 2.4. So if you have a 2.4 and you wanna run a single two, uh, MGM-12 extrusion, just download the files for the Trident gantry, the X gantry, so the, the X gantry, the tool head, the XY joints, it drops right in on a 2.4. Um, so you can do that. So they all run the same gantry. So on paper, your print speeds and quality are gonna be the same across the board. Um, now comparing the V1.8 and the Trident Tri-Point gantry, 1.8 is only side to side. You got a manual level front to back and then let a bed mesh handle the rest. The Trident is three point. If your bed's flat, you don't need a mesh. Um, I have no, that, it's personal preference. It's like the, the flying gantry on the 2.4. That's four point because it's a U-shaped gantry. It's not a plane, you know, it flies. So the V2, you have a lower center of gravity, gravity, gravity. The machine is more stable. Um, the Trident is a lower bomb cost, I believe. Um, actually, is the Trident a lower bomb? Yeah, the Trident's a lower bomb cost, I believe still. Um, it's a lower cost, but you have a higher center of gravity because all your moving mass is up top. Um, it maybe some people are it, it, on paper, it's a bit more robust of a system. Um, pick which one you think is prettiest. Okay, so we got layer shift again around the same point. So it's it's the travels that are killing me, I think. So let's try dropping down to 120 for travels. Okay. Check the separate tape. They're not even warm. I'm gonna bump the voltages up on them. Ooh. Okay, the extruder and the Z are warm though, but the X and yeah, let me let me let me bump the voltages up on my X and Y. Run current X is 0.6. My Z is bloody hot. And extruder. Actually, let's, uh, let's go to 8.8. .8. Oh, that's right, I swapped these motors out. I forgot about that. I think I swapped these motors out. Okay, we'll go to 0 .8. 0 0.8 across the board there. Restart, try again. Okay. 
jobs. Print speed fetching. Go. So we'll see. Yeah, oh yeah, that's another thing. With the, uh, the the V2, you have belted Zed, which is a much faster Zed. So if you print a lot of detailed things or you run Zed Hop like I do, it makes it for a faster, quick print. Because yes, a, a 0.4 or 0.6 millimeter Zed Hop is not a lot of time. However, if you can do each one half as fast uh, or twice as fast or three times faster on a V2, if you're printing something like an Eiffel Tower that has 1.8 million Zed Hops in it, um, it does add up over time. They're not pancake steppers. They they are fatter than pancakes. What's my favorite Voron and size? Um, personally, I think if it was like you could only have one Voron, you're only allowed one, it would be a 300 millimeter V2. Uh, firmware restart basically just refreshes the firmware. Um, and it's basically like the equivalent of just kind of like resetting it. Whereas restart, restarts the Raspberry Pi and it has to boot up again. So, yes, this is an older version of Fluid. Um, which printer has the newest version of Fluid? I think it's Tallboy. Yeah, so this is the newer version of, I, is it Tallboy has the newest? I can't remember. So here you can host, you can restart your host. This is the Raspberry Pi and then services, this is Fluid. So like, this is a firmware restart. This is a hardware restart. Yeah, Pavel, uh, Clipper, once you start using Clipper, um, comparing it, like, especially if you run multiple printers, constantly keeping firmware updated, tweaking stuff, it's so much nicer with Clipper because it's just web interfaces. Like, you, you just jump into the web interface and it's there and you can do whatever. Oh, hey. That, where, do I, where do I have the camera mounted on this? I have the camera on the ceiling of this one. Oh, there's the camera. But yeah, you can just jump into it and do whatever. Restart and reboot. Oh, okay, then yeah. Yeah, one just restarts, one's reboot. I don't know. I'm looking at the old interface here. It just says restart, firmware restart, host reboot, host shutdown. Now, firmware restart's what you need if you want to get it quickly restarted and new settings take effect. Which Discord are the Micron guys? Um, the the Voron one? I think they're on Doom Cube too. I can't remember. I'm not on the Doom Cube Discord. Will adding a filament sensor to the top of Orbiter make good for the Enraged Rabbit? Um, I think the filament sensor is below the extruder on an Enraged Rabbit. Uh, Clipperize my Ender 3 V2. Congrats. Okay, so yeah, Doom Cube, I think, is where the Micron guys are. The the Micron uh, Heart K is on the Voron team, too. What time is it, anyways? 3.30. I'll probably end the stream around 4. Nice little two-hour stream in the middle of the afternoon. Figure out what I'm doing for dinner tonight. I did a, uh... Yesterday I got fancy with dinner. I had the day off. Well, I have the whole week off. So, uh, last week, did a, uh, a pork shoulder on the grill. Set it up as a smoker. Did a whole pork shoulder. So good. So good. Uh, running the proximity sensor on the 12 volt too. Yeah, here's the thing. It, it t I did a video on installing this. I actually have a video on my channel on how to install it. So if you want to install like a bed probe on any printer that has a metal bed for three dollars, like if you got an Ender three and you don't want to spend like seventy dollars for the EAZ uh, the whatever the heck that thing's called, EZ ABL. Um, like this is three dollars. It's a two dollar probe and a five cent Bat eighty five diode, and then the rest is shipping. Um, 12 volt, it works fine. The biggest difference between the different voltages is the sense distance. 
So if you're running at 12 volt, you probably want to get like a PL08 probe with an eight millimeter sense distance on iron. Um, if you're running 24 volts, you can get around with way with a five volt or the PL05. So, so it's a, the difference is also because of the way the probes work, it's a resolution. So the PL08 and the PL05, they got different sense distances, but the steps are the same. So a PL05 has the same accuracy over five as a PL08 has over eight, right? So if like, think about it, it's say, imagine it can only measure on every full millimeter. The PL05 would be every millimeter would be a tick, but on the PL08, you would think it would be eight. No, it's still five, okay? So, or how do I, I can't remember how I describe it. But basically the resolution or the steps are the same but they just stretch out and shrink depending on the resolution. It's a wave, right? It's a wave. You're stretching and shrinking a wave. So the peaks and valleys of the wave are always the same number. So when you measure with the PL08, your resolution isn't gonna be as good as a PL05. But in terms of 3D printing, uh, Teaching Tech did a video on it where he um, went through and tested them all. And the worst probe was still within like point, like 10% of the w thickness of a first layer. So, as long as you have a probe that's repeatable, you're good enough, honestly. Three D HP, hello. Uh, Doom Cube is basically a V two with the electronics on top, um, and with a beefier frame meant for enclosing it more, like more insulation. So. like a pixel on a screen yeah I guess yeah it's like pixels so imagine you know a 720p image on a 720p screen and then a 720p image on a 1080p screen the the, the data is the same it's just stretched same pixel no matter of size I don't know I hope you understand what I meant Blam thank you for coming to member Doom Cube is an oven with a printing feature. See, I got you beat there. I put my V0 in the oven when I need to print hot stuff. So I just take my oven upstairs. I set it for like, you know, uh, 80, 90 degrees Celsius. I just throw the V0 in and I go to town printing, right? That's how you, that's how you print hot stuff, right? Small enough to fit. How's this print going? This one's going to be a fun print. This is going to be the print I'm going to feature on the stream on Saturday from Thangs. Air fryer, that might work. Yeah, an air fryer would work. It'd be consistent. Oh. Uh, it's always that same spot we're skipping. Uh, cancel. I wonder if it's the... Nope, these motors aren't getting hot. Let's bump them right up to an amp. One amp. Yeah, my XY motors are not getting hot. So one amp, 0.6. There we go for more restart. And let's drop the acceleration down. Because it's failing when it does the front of the boat. So when it's doing the front of the boat, that's where it's failing. So is that an acceleration issue or is that my square corner velocity being too high? The G-code could be corrupt. Yeah, um, let me... Well here, I'll, I'll drop down the acceleration for perimeters to 3000. Changing the angle of the benchy on the bed. Okay, we'll rotate the benchy. Rotate the benchy. Is 
So it's failing right around here. So the speeds are about the same. It's this layer right there that's failing. So 140 might be a little too much. Let's drop it down to 130. For the perimeter, let's drop down the perimeter to 120. Try that. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, can I name the Bonsai Skippy? No, it's Bonsai. That's its name. Actually, yeah, Skippy. We're going to rename it Skippy. There we go. Now it is Skippy. How does the Voron Afterburner handle ABS warping and colliding with it? Um, I don't have ABS warping issues in my Voron, for the most part. Um, what do you mean? Like, are you worried about it colliding? Because most printers, the ducks, like, I'm looking at my uh, FL Sun Super Racer here, and the ducks are about the same level as the nozzle. So. Mm -hmm. Look how slow that takes to heat up the hot end. Come on. Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. What controller board am I using and do you have recommendations for the best budget controller to run Clipper? Um, I use all of them. I have, this guy has an SKR Mini. Um, that's got the original Creality board. That's an SKR 1.4 Turbo. Um, that one has a spider in it. That's whatever FL Sun put in it. That one's got an octopus in it. That one has a... That has an SKR 2. And both of those, my V0s, have SKR Minis. Um, I have a Duet in here. I've got a Taco Raven, so I got a duet. I got a Taco Raven. Um, I don't know. Personally, for cheap boards, I would I would say just go with an SKR, SKR twenty two oh nine drivers, and you should be okay. I could help the heating with a lighter. Um, at one point, I may or may not have used a heat gun to speed up heating of the bed on this machine. The Delta might be a Robin Nano. Yeah, actually, I think you're right. It does come with a Robin, I believe. The one thing I really like about this is the fact that the controller is on a, uh, it's a pendant controller. How is the resin print coming? Oh yeah, that's cool. Um, right now on the resin printer, I need, I, need, I want another resin printer, but I got this little guy going. This guy is going on the resin printer right now. Are SKRs reliable now? I believe they fixed most of the issues. Um, so the SKR2 had some issues at launch. I believe they fixed them. Um, the Octopus is pretty good. I've got, still got five of them sitting over there. Gotta give those away at some point. Um, it's the Fizek Spider is the one with the issues. Um, yeah. What 
why don't I set up physical printer and super slicer so I can send, uh, cause I have multiple different computers and I'm lazy. So I'm always changing what version of slicer I use, what slicer I use, different slicers for different machines. Um, I know I, I like saving the G code. I just like, I don't know. So I usually will delete them off the printer after a while, but on like my computer upstairs, I have a file that has like every Juco file I've ever made ever. Um, so if I ever need to reprint something, I can just go grab it. But usually I delete them off the, off the printer after a while. What's up with the spiders now? I think they fixed them. I'm not 100% certain. I haven't really been following along, but officially um, my stance is I recommend the octopus over the spider. So. So I still have a bunch. I do have an Octopus Pro on the way, which I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> Cause I can li I could put it in uh, Tallboy. I could put it in Tallboy, um, but then I also have to get a 48 volt power supply. But it's got enough room, so I might do that. Um, yeah, so my spider is the original one as well. The problem is they had some QC issues and it had, um, it was failing with, um, I think it was a three volt rail was failing on it. So. M MKS Monster 8, I don't know, that's the thing. I, I know a lot of people uh, ask me about um, controller boards and printers and things that have just released. And I'm like, I, I don't know. And the thing is, anything from overseas, anything from China, it may be good on paper, but you do not know the quality, right? So like we know now the octopus is pretty good. A lot of people have gotten their hands on octopuses and are running them. And it seems to be a pretty good controller board. Um, but you don't know until it's in production, until a lot of people have them. So that's why I'm hesitant to recommend new hardware, controller boards specifically, um, until either I've run them or I, I've seen a lot of people running them for a while and not a lot of issues coming up. So. <laughs> I don't know. What about the ramps? Haha. <laughs> I knew I still had one. Uh, a Zeltec. Back in my day. Oh. Oh, went on an adventure. Okay, let's cancel this and actually, let's drop it down to something reasonable that should finish. Actually, before I do that, keep the bed hot. So we're gonna go 120 across the board. Nope, not 1120, 120 across the board. And we're gonna drop down to 2800 Excel. Oh my God, why are you like 2,800? So I wanna at least get it finished with a print. So, ba -ba 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 slice now. Banshee five.
Did you send me an invite? Uh, just direct message me. Unfortunately, I think I might have deleted your friend request. I get, um, no offense, guys, but if you send me a, a friend invite on Discord, I, I delete those. Um, I just have, like, I keep that, like, my friends list on Discord. I, anyone can message me. Anyone can message me on Discord, but my friends list I keep for, like, the team, essentially. And contacts I need. Because I get, like, a lot of invites, a lot of friend invites a day. So I might have accidentally deleted your friend invite, so just DM me. What are my thoughts on DLP resin printers? Less screen replacing sounds good to me, other than the drawbacks. I have one resin printer. I don't know how a DLP resin printer works. I have a Anycubic Mono 2K. It's over there. I like it. Um, it's printing right now. In terms of DLP and the advantages, I would ask um, one of the resin guys. Go ask Uncle Jesse. He probably knows. <laughs> but um, I, I'm, I'm more FDM than resin. I like resin. I want to get a bigger resin printer because I want to redo. I want to actually finally do some of the prop stuff I want to do. Um, but I don't know. I need to build a proper bench for my resin stuff. DLP has their own drawbacks. The heat light is not always even. Ah, good point. Uh, mono screens, I, I mean, you, like the only printer I have is a mono and I'm having no issues with that. Um, apparently they do wear out after a while, but yeah. Oh, everyone say hi, David. David's here. And like that smash button too. Um, yeah. But I do want to get my hands on a larger resin. So I watched like Uncle Jesse made with a massive like Photon 8K or whatever the heck it is. And I'm like, oh, I want one of those, but I, it's so hard to justify. Oh, that's going to be a nice print when it's done. That is coming out really good. It's like when you're peeking on something cooking in the oven and every now and then you look at it and you're like, oh, it's coming out so good. Like if you guys are curious, like here, I'll pull up the, um, the clipper control or the screen. Um, so yeah, you can see what's printing, right? Because you guys want to see what's printing in there, right? So I'll... Uh, I'll give you a sneak peek, okay? Here you go. So there you go. So there's the uh, webcam monitoring it. And um, unfortunately, there's a piece of paper in the way though, so. Oh, that's what's dragging. There you go, stay out of the way. I keep, I forgot, I actually have super, super sketchy scan up I don't know if you can see it under there, but there's tape. Because the way this printer is designed, um, when I was printing ABS, the part fan has a really bad gap in the back, so you get a lot of airflow, or sorry, the, uh, the heatsink fan has a gap which isn't an issue when you're printing PLA, but when you're printing ABS and you don't want any fan, it bleeds air down. So I had to like block it with like metal tape and it's like drooping down and dragging on the print. Oh, dang it, you could read the what was printing. Okay, it's printing a collapsing lightsaber. Shh, way to ruin the fun, Dominox. Dom Domino Vox. Why'd you have to ruin it?
turn that. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna. Okay, so everyone who called it out, I'm gonna ban you. Um, so goodbye, Tim. Goodbye, Blam. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, we already had a layer shift. I wonder if it's that square corner velocity. Yeah, let me try this drop in the square corner velocity and try again. I think that's what's doing it too, because I know a high square corner velocity will cause issues. So right now it's at, let's drop it down to seven. Save and close. Dashboard. Cancel. Yeah, let me move, get rid of the tape. hanging down underneath this. There we go. I don't know why everyone's saying the Y belt's loose. The Y belt is not loose. How long will I be streaming? Um, once we get, probably not much longer. Um, once we get a benchy going that doesn't skip in the first five minutes, I think I'm just gonna let it run and end the stream and whatever happens, happens. Hello, I was wondering if I have both Octoprint and Fluid on my pie. I believe you can. Um, I think uh, you can use Kiao, 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 K I A U H. You can use that to uh, swap that around, I believe. Print is not done until the heater block melts. Well, if the heater block melts on here, that's not good because this has a legitimate E3D V6 in it, I believe. Kiao. Yeah, there you go. Ben said it. It's Kiao. Q? Kiao. Well, you don't have to go like right, right the second to try it. God, I hate waiting on 12 volts to heat up. So what's everyone doing for the rest of the week? It's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday. Yeah. Come on, resin print. Oh, that's coming along real good. That's actually coming along really good. The happy little birdie. What tool head is this? This is the tool head that comes with the bonsai. I'm going to take up smoking cigarettes. Oh, there you go. It's a noble, and that's a noble goal. Cleaning up my work crunch to make room for the 2.4. There you go. I got to finish wiring up. I got to do the prep work for getting the uh, switch wire ready for the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder install. So that'll probably be uh, it's my tomorrow, and then get doing that on stream Saturday. Am I going to make a toasty trident? Um, Fizek reached out to me and wants to send me a trident kit. Um, I will probably, if they do, I'll probably just build it stock. I already have my high temperature printer. I don't need another. Um, we'll see.
did the same. Quit smoking, got a new condition. It's been... What is today's date? The 15th? No, it's 14th. So yesterday was four years since I quit smoking. So don't smoke, kids. Don't start. It's not worth it. Spend your money on 3D printers and alcohol. It's much more noble. So this is going to be the last run of the evening. And again, if anyone asks, this stream was pointless. This was just, hey, I felt like streaming on a weekday because I know for a lot of the Europeans, um, they can't watch live. So I figure, why not? Wife and the little guy are out shopping. Let's have some fun. Smoke for four years. I never vaped. I smoked for a decade. Um, I was lucky. I really only did it at work um, and when I was doing army stuff. So for me, it was always associated with like work. I never, I rarely did it at home. Um, and luckily I never did it while driving. Cause I heard that's like the hardest part to quit is to, is when you're driving. Um, but no, I just went cold turkey one day and haven't had one in four years. Pretty printing is no known cura. What? It was habit. Yep, that was my thing. Like, I'd go to work, have one. First break, have one. Lunch, have two. Last break, have one. Have one at the end of the day. And then go home and have, like, one before bed. Ah, uh, dipping. Oh, my God. I, I worked with people at dip, and that's... Ugh. Ugh. I gotta reprint the case for this. Um, the uh, For those that don't know, the Oscitone and the case not fitting... Um, it is designed with PLA in mind, so I got to go ahead and sit down and re-slice this in uh, PLA. My kid loves this thing. Or actually, my kid loves the, uh, the Scout or the APC. All it does is make random noises when you turn the knobs. My kid loves this thing. And... The good thing about printed toys, um, notice how the back plate is blue. He's already broken it, but you could just print a new one. So I think for these, um, where did I put it? Oh, where is it? Is it on one of my machines? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'm gonna reprint it in the uh, purple. Ghost Finder, yeah. Hundred bucks a week. Ooh, that's like don't. Oh, see, it skipped again. Okay. So how are we skipping when we're running slower? Let's drop the acceleration on the perimeters. I think that's what's getting me. It's the acceleration on the perimeters, I think. Oh, driver's overheating. Oh shoot, I have no cooling on this. I forgot about that. No, the heat sinks are all room temperature. Like I can put my fingers on the heat sinks and they are not warm at all. What about the backs? Yeah, the drivers aren't overheating. Good, good thought though. Good thought. I forgot to check for that. 
But uh, these drivers just have heat sinks and they're out in the open. They're not overheating though, luckily. They're running out of an amp. I love how warm those panels get. Stealth chop on. Uh, let me check. Printers config. Uh, homing speed, stealth chop threshold. So if if it has if it's zero, it's always stealth chop, right? Or no? Yeah, if it's zero, it's always stealth chop, right? I always forget which it's at. Or is it, uh, if there's a number that's up to that number, it's stealth drop and then after it's spread cycle. I can never remember. Zero is always spread cycle, yeah. So actually it has stealth drop on. So let me, uh, okay, so let me turn stealth drop off. Tries again. Uh, how well do your printers heat up the room in winter? Um, have you ever seen me with a jacket in here? Oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh, these motors are not quiet. <laughs> now I know why I had spread cycle enabled or stealth chop enabled on this machine. It is amazing how bad, like all my other printers run straight spread cycle and you don't hear them anywhere near as much as this thing, but these are crappy motors. Oh yeah. All the vibrations. Uh, is the table resonating? Everything's resonating. My teeth are resonating. I don't have any foam to put it on. Same as the LDO motors on 2.4. Like, remember the, the point nines I had on um, Toasty? And I, ended up, I ended up swapping those for 1.8s. Like, I have a box of steppers under here. Program a song. You guys have never seen a printer do that? out. Oh my god. The resonance. I have noise cancelling enabled too, guys. I have noise cancelling enabled. Let me turn it off. And music off. Enjoy.
Now I remember why I had this thing locked to spread cycle mode. Like... Okay, I'll just hold it. There we go. The feet on this are just plastic. There's no, there's no rubber on the feet. It's just straight plastic. Bungee it from the ceiling. That would work. Just mute the mic. Okay. This is the angriest printer ever. Oh yeah, and it's also TMCs at 12 volt. TMCs at 12 volt are horrible. So. Okay, I might muted the mic, you can. Yeah, oh yeah, everyone spam F. Just, just keep spamming F. And then while you're doing that, make sure you like that spash button. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, ring the bell. Um, if you want to help support the content I create and the things I do, I have links in the description as well. Um, join my OnlyFans. Uh, what else? What else can I do? Um, I don't know. You know how it be. Got to get that engagement metric up. This is horrible. This is absolute. I, I'm wearing noise canceling headphones too. <laughs> so before we go any further, I'm going to go back into the config and re-enable Stealth Chop. Because um, I don't want to ever listen to this ever again. So there we go. So now it has Stealth Chop when it reboots next. But it hasn't skipped yet. But I think I am going to call it there because it is getting kind of warm in here. Um, stone block. The problem is, it, the reason it's making all the noise is the feet. There's nothing on the feet. These are just ABS. There's no anything on the feet. So it'll just vibrate whatever it's on. That's why it's on the mat for now. Uh, no, this is my house. It's in my basement. So I'm actually closer to the ground as possible. Um, yeah, it'd probably make more noise on that granite slot. Plus I'd have to put it on there and it hasn't skipped yet. So we're just going to kind of let it go. So I am going to end the stream though in a couple minutes. So I'll give it like, we'll end at 4.15. I'm going to be up on my computer after this listening to this. I'm going to let it finish. I am going to let it finish. Need some TPU feed. I could do that. It used to have like the little stick on feet, but they fell off. Okay, now the motors are getting warm. Oh my God, I cannot say, okay, I'm, I'm ending it.
I'm calling it there. I'm canceling the print. I'm not letting this finish. I'm not listening to this for the next half hour. Tended to create a sounds of 3D printing collection. <laughs> Have DRVs on my bonsai. Oh God. Okay. So you know what? I will let this finish. If it dies, it dies. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, so we're going to end it there. Uh, hope you enjoyed the stream. Again, this was a completely pointless. We're just going to hang out in on a wonderful Thursday afternoon because I'm on vacation this week. Uh, hopefully I will see you next on Thursday or correction Saturday night. Uh, we'll continue with the enraged rabbit carrot feeder. Um, if not next Saturday or whatever, because I got a wedding this weekend, so might not be able to make it. But if I do, I do. I'll let you know. Follow me on the Twitters at 3DP Nero for up to date info on my goings on. Um, I saw an albino squirrel last night. I posted a video of it on there. Make sure to check it out. Um, on your way out, make sure you like the smash button, subscribe to the channel, links in the description if you want to help support the content I create, things I do. All of you who donated to the stream tonight, you're awesome. Anyone who watched the stream, you're awesome. The people in the future watching this, you're also awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week. Weekend is soon. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Have a nice day. Cheers.